Yes, okay. Thank there you we go. The session has so, now been recorded and you have the floor. Thanks, then, Leon. Yes, thanks, Debbie, for the arrangement. So let me share the screen first. Um, this one, yeah. So I hope all of you actually can see the slides, right? So, um, yes. So I hope all of you can see the slides right now. So, uh, so again, thanks everybody joining today's webinar. So, uh, and good morning and good afternoon for most of you and good night for some uh, colleagues in Hong Kong. Um, so I'm Dr. Leon Lei <coughs> from the University of Hong Kong as a Yilin Technologist. I also wear a second hat as a uh, IEEE Hong Kong session education chapter. So uh, IEEE is a corresponding parties in UK would be IET. So more on uh, electrical engineering and technology. So uh, I'm responsible for the education chapter that part. Uh, you can get the slides through this link and um, uh, feel free to uh, share with to colleagues if need. And I, I, my today's sharing will be more on the uh, what did we did and what we want to do in the uh, in the new normal or the next normal uh, from the Asia Pacific Asia Pacific perspective. So we will quickly go through some of the things uh, before the pandemic, and then we'll discuss more on during the pandemic and the next normal or the new normal. So in particular, we'll, we will focus on two projects. So one is uh, again from uh, uh, support by the IEEE uh, Region 10, that is the Asian Pacific region, um, uh, um, empowering teachers. There are some studies, uh, there are some projects from uh, India, Australia, and also Hong Kong. Uh, quickly go, go through this. And also another project is uh, funded by Hong Kong UGC, that uh, actually is the government to fund us to do something more after the pandemic, and uh, including in particular is the course and universities uh, training, as well as uh, research to understand uh, what did we did and, and how we did and, and what should we do in the, uh, in later on for the coming years. So that's the outline. Uh, again, so that's the, that's the uh, project. So e-teaching for you uh, actually run webinars, uh, conference, and conduct research. Uh, we will talk more about this project later on. And this uh, project is actually uh, uh, so, uh, support by all four uh, by four universities. So uh, University of Hong Kong, that's where I am. We have uh, also uh, co-ops from City University of Hong Kong, Hong Kong Polytechnic University, as well as Chinese University of Hong Kong. So all uh, four universities. And uh, of course, in Hong Kong, there are actually eight uh, funded universities. So uh, we have also some colleagues from uh, UST, so uh, University of Science and Technology, Baptist University, Lingnan University, and Educational Education University of Hong Kong. So they are more related to K-12 uh, education, but still both, uh, have some studies on uh, higher education for the last one. And of course, we have also some uh, around 10 uh, private universities in Hong Kong also. So, that, so that's the setting. Okay, so one, one more page on the situation in Hong Kong. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of the arrangement, actually we start to have the um, remote instruction starting from the January uh, 29th from uh, 2020 uh, and then start to have virtual. So that's, the, that's how we start. And then I will still remember uh, actually the vice president sent me an email to start up. Uh, oh, okay, can you have to make uh, two videos on how to start the Zoom recording and how, what should we, what should teachers do for the virtual instruction? So start from two videos and then a series of videos and then a training support guide and then uh, different kinds of system development, support trainings, webinars, et cetera. So that's the beginning of the whole situation. So we go for virtual for the first semester and then uh, situations get better. So we go for hybrid, but there are also very challenges on running those hybrid instructions. That's why in spring semester, we go back to virtual or hybrid teachers can design, and this semester we go for face-to-face -face or hybrid. And uh, just a little bit more about Hong Kong situations. Uh, in total, there are around 12,000 cases, and um, around 60% of the uh, 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 citizens got a uh, vaccine. And, uh, but we also have a very strict restrictions on travel, mass, and gathering. So right now, we still uh, have, uh, for outdoor, we'll just allow four people to gather together. So that's the situation. So that's why uh, we, we, when we go for those uh, hybrid instructions, we still aim at doing uh, lots of social distancing, infection control, et cetera. So that's the setting in Hong Kong right now. Okay, uh, so start to talk about the uh, e-learning. So uh, of course for uh, colleagues, uh, for some students and teachers that haven't explored uh, e-learning before, so they may think about COVID, uh, uh, 
e-learning is just Wi-Fi and LMS. And after COVID, we will, one, thing, one more thing will be Zoom. Uh, there's uh, something extra, extra as a uh, e-learning technologies, all of us noticed that actually there's something extra. So it's not just talking about Wi-Fi, Moodle, or, or Canvas uh, and Zoom. So it's something more. So uh, before the pandemic, so actually, uh, let me introduce myself again. So I'm actually from Tally. So one of the e-learning support team. Uh, e-learning uh, support team, that means actually our major duty is on the development. So uh, we have two centers, one on e-learning development, one on uh, teacher training. So we have two separate teams. And that's what we do in the past. So uh, mainly talking about uh, producing multimedia, producing technologies, uh, chatbots, VR, AR, et cetera. We still have a small pro proportion on training. So mainly on uh, bringing awareness. So instead of technical training. So we don't go for technical training in the past. We just want to have more teachers building more interest in e-learning, so building awareness. And then also speak a little bit about the research. So that's uh, for in Hong Kong, you as well as from other universities in Hong Kong, uh, the e-learning support team is most likely is a development team. Uh, and, and, then, uh, and then that's something we support for branded learning. We go for flip classroom. So this is this arrangement. So uh, we try to support teachers to run large scale flip classroom. Uh, we develop Game, uh, game here as shown here to uh, let students play, play uh, learn through playing games. We support teaching development systems here such that uh, the teachers at, 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 the, at the podium actually can monitor all, all teams. Uh, and they are here talking about uh, uh, five to six units and departments. So medicine, nursing, uh, and then social worker, et cetera, to run those flip classrooms together. And this is a top law. So again, we run in a uh, large scale flip classroom uh, to support them. Uh, just unfortunate that uh, all these things actually can't, uh, we can't run this right now because, uh, because of the social distancing. So, and infection control. So I believe that uh, this can be implemented for at least few years in the Hong Kong situation. Yes, that's unfortunate. And of course, uh, we also produce books and sports. So, uh, uh, so, and also bring the uh, ideas and concepts back to campus to next to uh, teachers to, do some self-recording. Uh, so that's why it, when the pandemic starts, actually we have some experience of how to train people, how to do some video production. And then starting from that point, we talk about more and more things. So that's the situation. And of course, uh, for teacher training or e-teaching training, uh, we still have some arrangement in Hong, in Hong Kong. For example, this is the BOAT project. So actually led by uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University, so Darren. So he's the PI for this project. So again, provide training for cross U uh, universities and to run those. And eventually, again, it's uh, more on awareness, more on uh, producing a more solid uh, development grant proposal, and then to and then hopefully can get some funding or implement directly by teachers. Again, so it's more on awareness. So not on those uh, steps or uh, uh, skills training. But uh, just unfortunately, everything changed. So start to have the pandemic starting uh, January 2020. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, this is the worst situation. I, I realized that actually in the April 2020, actually uh, uh, almost all countries actually, uh, they can't go as, as, as children or the students can't go to school. More than 90% of the learners actually have to stay at home and can't attend schools. So that's the, the situation. And then, and then for us, actually, uh, of course, the whole world actually changed. And for us, we also change. So uh, our role changed a lot. So in the past, we are talking about co-developed contents with some teachers, with some lead time. Uh, right now, we have to change the role. Is to, we have to train all teachers to self-develop uh, contents by themselves. Uh, of course, uh, for us, we just have, and uh, in our team, we just have uh, five to six colleagues, and we can support all teachers. So that's why. Well, uh, we have to try our best to train all teachers to do the self-development. And of course, the time dimension also changed. So in the past, uh, teachers, after they have the awareness, they can learn more from, from us and then uh, get more prepared and then run some pilot tests and then uh, try it. Uh, and then we revise it before the real deployment. But uh, right now, uh, there's no, no time for them to try. So they have to 
develop the content at once and for us we also have to develop our training at once so so it's a uh, it's quite demanding actually not that easy to uh, and quite challenging that time okay so during the pandemic so that's why we uh so that's why we that's the story starts and we have lots of developments uh, uh actually we have produced a we have tried to document the things that we did and we produced a video on uh, last year uh i i would like to show the video just a very quick overview on things that uh, actually free university did uh just unfortunate that the audio seems is not okay so that's why uh uh mostly you have to watch the narration uh watch the narration and can't hear the voice so but the uh, the the is the the background uh, audio is just uh background music as well as the narration so it's still okay so we can uh, watch the it without we can watch it without the audio so and also let me speak up a little bit Okay, so that's the end of the video. Uh, again, so apologize for the audio. So it seems the audio is not working right now at that time. So during the testing, so I prefer to mute it and you can watch the videos. Okay, so, but, uh, so this is the overview. So you can see for free universities, they have different kinds of uh, background arrangements. For, for example, Polytechnic University, they have more uh, produced books. So that's why they can use more books for supplement the teaching development. And uh, every university have actually tried something different. And so that's the overall. And uh, so let me do what I want to share is uh, right now the few for following slides will will try to use the uh, uh, restate some contents, but uh, from a uh, human resource development perspective, uh, because uh, in the past when we are talking about a year end development, so we are talking about curating. So first uh, our awareness and then curating teachers and then to do the things. 
So, uh, but right now we are talking about uh, instant uh, preparation. So still uh, teachers have to learn instantly and then teach uh, instantly. So that's why it's more on skills training. And that's why we would like to uh, analyze the content or the situation through human resource development instead of some other uh, theories. Okay, so, so that's why uh, in HRT, they have four pillars on uh, human resource development. The first one is uh, employee development. And in our interpretation, interpretation will be on trainings, on fragments. Of course, uh, for us, right, uh, for us that time, so we don't need to bring any, and uh, you know, we do not need to have any awareness, uh, bring up the awareness because all the teachers and students are aware that they have to go for online and remote instruction. So we are, so that's why we are more on the teaching uh, technical skills and of course, uh, off the job. And then of course, uh, since we have to support thousands of teachers, uh, thousands of teachers, so we prefer to have a group, that means uh, from a university level or faculty level training, and as well as uh, self-study. So we produce all the training materials here. And of course, to speed up the learning process, we go for presentation and, uh, and discussions QA at the end. So instead of uh, trying role play or something else, and of course, we go for live, we go for recording, and put everything on YouTube. So here show some of the examples. The, the first one right at the top, so it's actually talking about the playlist that we have developed, uh, talking about how to run, how to learn Camtasia, Zoom, Mentimeter, etc. And uh, you can see actually uh, the top right, uh, top left corner, you can see even uh, two videos on teaching teachers how to uh, do hybrid instructions in the classroom. Uh, because some teachers want, instead of uh, running uh, those sweat minutes or uh, lessons, in their office or at home, they want to go to a very familiar place that is the lecture room and do the same recording. But they still need to configure how to do the audio recording or, and the video recording arrangement. So that's why we also produce training videos on this. And a second thing is uh, here, the, the middle one. So uh, besides uh, training for teachers, we also provide training for students. Although we believe uh, students actually are digital native, they learn everything very fast, but there are still some skills that they haven't explored before. So that's why we have some volunteer interns uh, uh, helping us to develop some videos on uh, uh, tips on, uh, on online instructions, online learning, how to do collaborative assignments through uh, online environments, and then writing essays through online resources, et cetera. So this is for uh, uh, training, uh, for students training, so how to learn online. And then the bottom one is actually the examination system. So right, uh, actually for Hong Kong U, we actually start to have the uh, online examination system. So since 2019, uh, and then we use it again in 2020, and then several times later on. Um, for ITS, the team that developed this system, they are not that, uh, they are not that familiar to run, uh, to produce those videos. So we are the team to support the uh, infrastructure development team to provide trainings. So it's not talking about trainings just for students. It's also provide trainings for teachers, for investigators, for proctors, et cetera. So we have to let them get prepared because uh, everything is new, nobody has experience. So that's why we have to well prepare, well support for them. And we run those right minutes. It's talking about thousands of, uh, 1,000 students or, or uh, six to 800 students joining uh, web minutes every time. So it's quite uh, challenging that time. Yes. So we also have to provide trainings before exam and during exam. So they have lots of things to be prepared. So in order to ensure the remote exam is still reliable and also quite uh, smooth. So that's the arrangement. So that's the training part. And of course, the second, uh, the second pillar from HRD POVs will be performance support. Uh, in, in actually, another interpretation is the FAQ and then manual to do the things. And of course, for us, uh, we prefer to have the step by step. So, and also the purpose. Let us let the colleagues or uh, teachers know. So, what's the purpose of having this in, uh, having this software? And then, what should be the step by step process to do certain things? And then, of course, we also have the uh, with tables with links, etc. So, here shows an example of a table. So uh, for example, teachers are very familiar to run those uh, uh, assessments in group activities, but they don't know what can they do for uh, assessments in the remote instruction. So that's why we create some tables, uh, so-called the digit, uh, BOMS Digital Taxonomy. 
and then uh, and then also listing out the contents can be good. So for example, teach students can still go for creating wikis, podcasts, videos, etc. And this is something beneficial, and maybe teachers haven't explored before because uh, in the past they can just do all the group presentations uh, within the classroom, and once the presentation finished, and that's the end. And right now, students have to make videos, clear all the copyrights, upload to YouTube, and share to teachers. And those contents will also be banned and can, is, can be shared to the public and beneficial to the public. And here shows the wiki also. So the content once uploaded to wiki and will be benefiting the whole community. So actually also students have, can have the opportunity to learn literacy skills. And that's something teachers haven't explored before when they are in the classroom. So once we go for remote instructions, those teachers start to consider. And of course, different kind of assess assessments uh, in the remote space or digital space. And we provide some links. So for example, we are talking about more examples and step-by-step uh, step step instructions on uh, doing certain things. So we have provided extra links for extra content for, uh, for, the, for, for teachers. And then uh, of course, the, the, most of the, most of the learners, that means uh, teachers uh, from our perspective, uh, actually fresh uh, learners. They, uh, most of them don't know anything about uh, uh, remote instructions. First time they try the Zoom uh, Zoom's, uh, software, some of them have, have uh, explored uh, Moodle system or the LMS before. So that's, that's, the, that's something that's really new to them and we have to teach them uh, in a baby step. So that's why we try to uh, map the uh, situation. So in the face-to-face, -face, they are before class, during class, after class. And then for online, we saw we can still group the, the things that we have uh, teachers have to do into before class, during class, and after class. So uh, before class, we produce videos. And then during class will be a uh, will be synchronous uh, sessions and also group this group work remotely and in digital space. And after class will be more assessment. So uh, teachers are more familiar to this situation and they know what should they, what do they need to do step by step. And of course we provide extra materials, links, and then once the teachers click on the, uh, the box and then we'll jump to another page and then provide more content and they jump again and provide another page and jump to, uh, uh, jump to another page for more content. And actually we develop a chatbot on this. So uh, also uh, a, a experimental, experiment of using chatbot for supporting uh, teachers to uh, implement or to uh, go through the online instruction design process. And then the third pillar from my HRD perspective will be on organization development. So more on, um, on something beyond training. So it's talking about uh, how we develop a team. Uh, so that's true. For example, here is talking about community of practice. Uh, um, some teachers may still very worried, so they want to have some examples from other peers or colleagues. So that's why in some universities, so for Hong Kong, we don't have COP, but for some other universities in Hong Kong, they have the COP and they run the webinars online and then uh, with uh, peers showing experience and then also uh, benefit to some new teachers. And then at the beginning of the pandemic, there will be time home meeting again. So uh, net, uh, and with the VP as well as President joined the meeting and then to, uh, to uh, give some direction or advice to, te uh, to teachers, so what should they do? Uh, more important is actually the, the task we design. For example, as, 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 we, uh, as I just mentioned, so we, for Hong Kong U and some other universities in Hong Kong, we go for remote exam. So uh, we develop a centralized system and we uh, automate almost every steps for the remote exam. So instead of going for third party surveys, so we have to redesign the task on uh, examination uh, and provide trainings for, for both, uh, for all the stakeholders. Of course, we also uh, support through providing centralized uh, software surface infrastructure. Uh, so that's why it's the first time we uh, purchased the Zoom license, Panopto license, we expand it. And with some other Mentimeter, we just, uh, we subscribe and then just renew this year. So, and then with different tools, et cetera. So that's why we provide some centralized tool as well as some central support and sub, uh, central training uh, webinars and training materials for teachers. So that's the basic support. And of course, for faculty level, for department level, they have different levels of support also. 
Okay, so, so talking about the software, so of course, uh, uh, we, uh, some universities will go for Blackboard Collaborate, like this one. And then there will be, uh, for some universities, like Hong Kong, you will go for uh, Zoom. And we, go, uh, we also subscribe Mentimeter for some interactions. And some, uh, some colleagues also use Kahoot uh, for, for making the discussions a bit more engaging. Uh, of course, in Hong Kong, there are also some other tools. So for example, the UReply and YoTeach actually is uh, some homegrown tools uh, in Hong Kong. So they got, uh, they are actually some projects from uh, PolyU, Polytechnic, and uh, you reply from CHK, so Chinese University. And they have been used in the environment, in the curriculum for two or three years or four years already. So that's why uh, they have some experience, they have the communities, and they actually promote a lot during the pandemic. And, uh, and then use it for, again, some something like Miro, but with uh, more support on uh, the uh, drawings, and also the mathematical equations and sharing and as, as etc. So uh, of course, uh, this is the Hong Kong situation. In mainland China, they will have another set of tools. So uh, so uh, uh, and so from Baidu and also Tencent and some other uh, and some other companies. So so and and of course for uh, uh, for Japan, they will have different kinds of tools. So they will go for uh, another concept of tools, and also in Taiwan, they will go for Google Surface, mo most likely, yes. So actually, uh, different countries in this Asian Pacific region, they have their homegrown tools, uh, homegrown tools, and also and with the support of homegrown tools, as well as the, some uh, more popular tools around the world, and then to do the uh, re uh, remote instruction. And of course, there are some, uh, the last pillar will be career development. So uh, of, of course, this is unfortunate that actually all teachers are actually were, uh, are hurrying, we're hurrying, so making the contents, et cetera. So that's why most of them can, they can't go for some uh, career development. But uh, actually, uh, every university is actually support, uh, provide grants and awards for recognizing colleagues, the effort, as well as uh, provide grants for some tailor-made uh, uh, in, innovation. For example, some of the units will use the grants for buy to buy some uh, high quality audio microphone. So because they believe uh, uh, audio is more important, and then uh, some departments or units will use the grants for for, uh, for recruiting students helpers to be the supporter. So every teacher will have a, a dedicated uh, helper to go for re remote instruction. So every units and teams actually use the grants for different purpose. And of course, for example, this is from CUHK, uh, from Chinese University. They go for uh, remote on, uh, they, in, in the past, they do this kind of uh, a robot uh, uh, curriculum uh, through face-to-face uh, -face discussions, but they have to go for remote uh, lab right now. So you can see right here. So that's the training part. And for the thing, second things that we start to do later on, so uh, this year is on literature review because uh, uh, different teams, so actually not just in Hong Kong but also some other areas, they start to uh, go, they start to have uh, those uh, remote exam, uh, remote instruction. So that's why and start to have some results published in the conference and journal and articles, etc. And it's good for us to start to review and then learn from others. So that's why we go for a literature review. Uh, we focus on engineering and computer science only. And then we did on uh, March uh, this year. And then we have uh, some keywords. So for example, engineering education, CS, uh, uh, pandemic, COVID-19. And, uh, and then we go for searching for papers. Uh, this is the IEEE PAL conference, uh, which is a, a flagship conference in Region 10, the Asian Pacific area, on uh, teaching and learning the uh, uh, computer and the engineering education field. So we found uh, around 160 papers uh, have mentioned about COVID-19, and eventually we see that 24 for analysis. And then we also go for IEEE Explore and ACM. So uh, again, it's uh, uh, some uh, IEEE and as well as CS uh, education uh, 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 field uh, database. And then again, we search for around 150 papers, and then we select 14 for analysis. And eventually we have 38. Uh, we, I, I don't go through the uh, the studies step by uh, paper, uh, paper by paper, 
I just go for some data overall, uh, one case and then some recommendations. So this is an example. So talking about, uh, uh, this is actually a case from Brazil. So they, uh, even for Brazil, they submit papers to uh, Region 10 Conference, uh, Asian Pacific Conference. So what they do is, uh, what they did is actually using uh, Google Meet, uh, GitHub and Kakut and Google Drive to do the work together. So uh, unfortunately in Hong Kong, we don't go for Google Meet. Uh, we mostly we will use Zoom because uh, Google Meet cannot be used sometimes in mainland China. And we ha also have some uh, call, uh, some students in even in, uh, in mainland China, in India and in Southeast Asia, they can't come back to Hong Kong and they, uh, and they sometimes they can't uh, <coughs> attend lessons because of the internet connection. So uh, the, that time is the, the internet connection is not that reliable. So, so besides uh, having synchronous discussion, we also have to provide recordings for them. So that's uh, some summary. So I just want to skip to summary for that study. Uh, again, uh, we have to be, uh, after the as literature review, we actually discover there are always, there are some challenges for, for field trips, for internship. And in particular for, uh, for engineering, uh, we, it's not easy for, for teachers or for students to go for lab. So at that time, so and it's difficult and challenging to go for remote lab. So not every case is uh, possible. So that's why uh, it's quite challenging and we have to prepare lots of guidance and let, uh, let students to get prepared because they, uh, they are isolated. So they stay in the room, they stay in their, uh, their home and they are not supported by peers, by teachers next to them. So we have to make the guidance to even more clear and then provide uh, consultations hour, et cetera. And then a second part is about the failure. So uh, infrastructure. So even after a year, we still have some cases actually uh, students can't access the uh, net recordings. And sometimes uh, even uh, in Hong Kong will be the situation is it's very cloud. So that's why um, uh, teach students have difficulties accessing internet uh, and the bandwidth have to be shared by, uh, by family members. So, and also very noisy, very cloud, et cetera. So that's some, uh, the, some problems. And we have to ensure the content can be uh, assessed by everybody. And I will have to, uh, you have to understand that students have some difficulties. So we have to uh, support them and also uh, uh, maintain the motivation and engagement. Okay, so the, ne the, the next part will be the new normal or the next normal. So uh, after two years of experimentation, so almost two years, and then we go back to a more, uh, more uh, better situation. So that's why uh, we, uh, for some universities in Hong Kong, we start to go back to face to face again. But of course, with uh, the classroom setting is uh, already different. So uh, we have to go for social distancing. Uh, the capacity have to be changed from fifty percent to seventy percent around that, and uh, uh, we can't go for those very close uh, interactions uh, uh, and very. Uh, uh, for, for flip classrooms, there are lots of lim limitations. So although we are going to the normal, but it's uh, actually the new normal is different from the old normal already. Okay, and for us, we of course, we have to change the uh, roles again. So instead of training all teachers to self-develop, we have to co-develop with some teachers. Uh, just fortunate that the, some teachers in the past, they have explored e-learning. So uh, after these two years, so uh, some of the teachers, uh, all teachers experience e-learning, and some of them become more interested in e-learning and they want to do something more, just beyond, uh, want to do something more beyond Zoom. So that's why they will approach uh, us or, sub, uh, or approach some other uh, developers to do further development. And of course, uh, actually the government also, uh, also identify and discover there's the something, uh, opportunity. So that's why they also afford, uh, offer a special grant on uh, virtual teaching and learning development. So around uh, 15 million pounds for eight universities to do the development. And then uh, this uh, big funding shared by eight universities on, and they have to do, uh, uh, conduct or run those projects on four areas. So uh, first is a uh, quality assurance, government's assessments, so make sure the uh, virtual instruction is up to standard. Second will be the interactions between contents, between teachers, between students, so the interactions, more on interactions. 
The third will be on platforms and facilities for uh, long-term development. We will also share some examples later on. And then the last will be on skills-based training. So more on uh, uh, how can we uh, train doctors or nurses or medical school colleagues or students or engineering uh, school colleagues or students to, to, uh, to, to learn the skills. So this is something challenging in virtual instruction. And there are some projects uh, on this. And of course, there are also uh, uh, these, uh, and also uh, the government also requires some of the projects should be cross uh, university. So that's why we have the IICA and e teaching for you. This project is actually one of the IICA projects. And of course, uh, effort, again, so every university have their own priorities and projects. Uh, I would like to show two uh, examples here. So the first from University of Hong Kong. So, uh, so we run those again quality assurance on data governance and privacy from law professors and teachers. And we also have the e-teaching for you. So to ensure the every teachers are get more prepared to do some to do virtual instructions. And of course, we also run those e-teaching for you as well as IDA. So this is the IDA I would like to talk a little bit. So uh, as I mentioned, there are some teachers. So in the past, they haven't heard about e-learning. Uh, after two years, they heard of, uh, they experienced it, uh, and they what they know is just Zoom, but they want to try something more. Uh, but the situation is they are not well prepared to do the uh, project uh, proposal writing. So sometimes because uh, they just know something about Zoom, but they know nothing about uh, e-learning. So that's why we have a offer a uh, idea uh, IDEA scheme, and then we uh, work with them uh, instead of uh, asking them to write proposals. Uh, maybe I can use this next page for 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 instruction. Yeah, this, okay, never mind. So I, I let me talk a little bit more here first. So for IDA, so and then the, they are they are not that uh, competitive or they are not that old experience to write uh, teaching proposals, uh, teaching development proposals. That's why we work with them to develop the content together. So we will talk about uh, more about this uh, later on. And of course, uh, we also have the infrastructure on uh, more on providing feedback. To, stu uh, to students on uh, multimedia. So the Fox system and the DES system both are on, uh, on uh, VR environment as well as uh, uh, the video platform, but with more uh, feedback uh, functions embedded on it. And of course, from uh, Hong Kong Baptist University, they do some, they did something similar and they work on something similar. So on assessment, on exam, on virtual field trip and learning it takes. So you can check this link for more details. Okay, so as besides the UGC, besides the government, so actually uh, actually for and also some other associations, for example, I know even in chemistry education, they have also this kind of support and initiative on actually uh, fund uh, some projects on capacity building. So that just to know more about virtual instructions and provide a high quality engineering education for students. So uh, they launched two schemes this year. So one is the capacity building and the other one is the rich and local initiatives. And they are, these two projects and schemes are more on providing, helping uh, teachers to have a global best practice in education. So, uh, so, so that's why these two schemes fund on uh, policy, uh, curriculum developments and then uh, learning technologies, etc. And then, uh, so this is for higher education. And then the second one will be for uh, so teachers beyond engineering schools, and as well as teachers in K twelve, uh, teachers that uh, the uh, instruction language is not uh, English. So that's why this one also uh, also have to for for this scheme they also have to uh, ask the uh, the project holder to run some uh, Cantonese or the local language uh, training. So that's the region 10, so Asian Pacific region. And then here are some projects run, uh, run under the region 10 EA schemes. So for example, the India Council, so they actually run uh, a series of workshops on, on, the, on various perspectives on uh, P&L, academic administration, research of uh, educational technologies. So we, they set up actually two or three WhatsApp groups, so with uh, hundreds of people inside, and then sharing the experience. And then for Hong Kong, we run two. So uh, one first on AI, 
So uh, it's not talking about AI for uh, AI research. So it's talking about existing uh, AI tools that can be used for DNL. And one of the example, of course, is Grammarly. So we, we talk about all oh, these kind of uh, tools are already popular and also can be used uh, for free. So Grammarly, et cetera. Uh, and then another dimension will be chatbot. So we identify actually chatbot, there will be more and more applications using chatbot for virtual instructions. Uh, and I actually published some paper in the past and they are, they are more and more citations right now. So we also foresee chatbot is one of the area that will be, uh, they will have more and more uh, awareness. And then uh, we run those trainings uh, both in English and Cantonese so to share experience. And then uh, we also talk about uh, this project, so uh, uh, supporting teachers to teach uh, in the future. So with uh, learning better learning technologies, as well as Australia, they also run some workshops. So under uh, the support of IEEE Region 10. So, uh, so here's again another page showing the trainings that we have in the past. Uh, uh, we have trainings on AI, copyright, we are, et cetera. So this is, uh, we run one remnants on August and then one on September and one on October. Uh, this is the AI. So, uh, and then uh, AI, and then we talk about uh, chat box, we talk about uh, uh, data security, we talk about uh, data mining, etc. So in this webinar, and then copyright. So we invite a law professor to talk about copyright. So she is a expert in copyright and IP. So she talk about copyright and I also talk about creative commons and OERs and talk about uh, uh, wiki assignments. Uh, so uh, wiki assignments, so let students uh, do their project and benefit uh, communities at the same time. And of course, since uh, you, so there are people talking about, uh, so there are some universities still going for uh, hybrid instruction. So that's why there are also some trainings on hybrid instruction. So, teaching centers, some teachers uh, uh, sharing experience and, uh, and then have some discussions. So actually it's quite hard that uh, we, we, we expect there will be some teachers and students feel interest, but actually uh, there's a huge demand. So uh, in particular, it's actually the demand is not from Hong Kong, it's actually from Southeast Asia. Uh, uh, more, more than 50% of the participants are actually from Southeast Asia. Uh, you can see uh, actually for every workshop we have, uh, for every web minutes, we have uh, well, more than 1,000 registrations every time. And then we, right now we have, uh, you can see there are some of them will go for online and synchronous discussions and some of them will watch offline through YouTube, maybe uh, internet connections problem. Uh, but they are huge demands and, and they ask for uh, more trainings, etc. And I, I guess because in Southeast Asia, some teachers may not be that well support on various of things. So, uh, so that's why when we run some webinars on AI, on copyright in virtual instruction, uh, uh, they take join, yes. And also we run some uh, uh, webinars and, can, and workshops in English and Cantonese, again, reach to some uh, non-English uh, non medium schools and universities. So by the way, so talking about uh, uh, copyright. So actually, uh, uh, actually, there are some more uh, different kind of issues on copyright in virtual instruction because in the past in Hong Kong, we can actually use all kinds of contents within the within the classroom within the schools. But uh, once we go for virtual instructions, that means that things can be shared uh, beyond the school and um, beyond the classroom, and then uh, that's something that there are some copyright issues and and etc. So. Uh, that's why there are lots of teachers asking about all uh, lots of uh, copyright questions that time. Yeah. And it uh, should be an area to further explore actually. Okay, there are also some questions gathered from audience. So for example, in copyright, so who own the content? So for the assignments, who own the content? For the teaching materials, who own the content? So how to use the creative commons, how to use the OER, et cetera. So how, uh, whether we, if we use some music within the classroom or in the tutorials or in virtual instruction, is it okay? There are different kinds of uh, questions raised from audience. And of course for AI, uh, uh, they so also ask whether the AI uh, can replace teachers. Uh, if they are know nothing about AI, so what should they do to kickstart to learn about AI for uh, TNL, et cetera. 
So and whether teachers and students can understand the insights generated by AI, etc. So we try to address these questions in the back minutes and as well as the QA session. So uh, yes, and hopefully they learn something about uh, AI and get inspired and then to kickstart to do something. Okay, uh, again, so besides training, we also have research. So uh, that's why uh, we the next part will be on uh, the analyzing the ET train training strategies across universities. So right now we actually, uh, we have invited uh, teaching centers in uh, university teaching centers in Hong Kong, in Singapore, Macau, and likely Japan, uh, and then to have discussion, and then to have discussions, interviews, understand uh, the context and the strategies, and then we can do a comparative study. Uh, and here show some of the main theme. So whether uh, what did they did, and what sh teachers should do in the future, what kind of com uh, competencies they should have for remote instruction, uh, uh, what should what should we provide. So what kind of training we should provide for to support teachers. And then since some stakeholders, they don't want to change, but uh, the, the, they, have to, they have to be changed, uh, they have to change. So that's why we also think about whether uh, what kind of uh, mechanism we can uh, use to support still the stakeholders to change for, for in the next stage. So we are in, we kickstart the study in, uh, in August, and then we interview several teachers right now and uh, hopefully there will be more sort of findings uh, after uh, December. And of course, uh, they are because of the VTL funding. So that's I that's why there are lots of projects going right now. And some some teams they don't have some good talent, or they can just recruit fresh colleagues to do the work. So that's why we provide some reports to them. So talking about a uh, yeah, digital learning instructor, instructor, what should be the skills, the prerequisites, the things that they should do, they what, uh, what kind of duties they can do, and uh, some steps on how to do the decision in the uh, e-learning development, how to revise the content, how to inspect the potential issues in the videos, etc. So we provide some documents. Hopefully, they will we can uh, support uh, different teams and units to have a more up to standard uh, virtual instruction development. And then, of course, we also have some uh, revamp on facilities. So, uh, so, so this is the hybrid instruction. Uh, so this is the some of the lecture rooms. So uh, we have more considerations of running hybrid instructions. So even the, after the pandemic, uh, there will be some classes that will go for hybrid. So that's why, uh, and even in large classes. So that's why we actually try to revamp the content and revamp the classroom and with better facilities. Uh, more important is actually the content is the, the concept here is contentness. So there will be, uh, uh, everything can be, uh, try the best to have a, a automate uh, recording through the one button studio. So there's the minimal human support. And we try to go for those uh, uh, microphone away such that we don't need to pass the mic to students uh, around. So actually the teachers and students can discuss, collab and through just without a microphone, but there will be some ceiling microphone to get, it, to get it the voice uh, and the microphone array. And of course there are some tracking cameras. It seems not that powerful because uh, sometimes a tracking camera will track the students instead of teachers. And um, so that's why some, <clears throat> some teams will, instead of uh, having track, tracking camera, so they have the preset, uh, preset setting for uh, formal, so uh, showing the uh, the <clears throat> camera in uh, uh, right in right hand side of the lecture room, center left, and the whole room. So that's the <clears throat> there are some key configurations for for every classroom. Okay, so I would like to skip this one, so have some more time. Okay, so uh, uh so uh, as mentioned, actually there are some teachers who are. Have, uh, who are new to e-learning. So uh, they haven't tried e-learning in the past. Uh, the experience is only that they try e-learning because the, these two years they have to do, and they feel more interest, and they want to try something more, and they will approach us to, uh, to have some further development. So this is one of the example so from graduate school. So uh, for in graduate school in the past, they will be just uh, uh, classroom discussions, et cetera. So, and then, uh, 
And then later on, they, uh, after the pandemic, uh, or actually it's the, during the summer, they asked us to see whether they, they can have some virtual tools to support them to do better group discussion. So that's why we, we work with them, develop the content through the mirror board. And here shows an example uh, with the, some walk up exercise as well as free case scenarios and then discussions at the end and then a wrap up, uh, wrap up video. So let me zoom to uh, check for one of the scenario, which is about authorship. So, so talking about on the, on the paper, who should be the first, pay, uh, first offer, uh, who should be the corresponding offer, etc. cetera. So uh, authorship. So uh, you can see this is the scenario and then the questions and then ask students, they can form teams virtually and then go to one boxes and, and then do the discussion and write down the argument to support uh, each, uh, yes or no or some other alternatives, uh, choices or uh, solutions. So actually you can see students actually uh, discuss through Zoom, uh, but just listening to the audio and then they will, uh, everybody get an, on the mirror board and then to write on it. And you can see this is a situation and you can see there are lots of courses going around. So that means the discussion is very engaging. They're walking around, uh, looking at other, uh, other peers' uh, comments and arguments and then respond, et cetera. And actually it's quite uh, engaging. So it's really like a post session in some conference right at that time. And, uh, and then uh, through these experiments, actually the graduate school teachers identify, oh, for digital whiteboard, there are some opportunities and flexibility. So in the past, they just stay in the room and then have some small group discussions. Right now they can uh, have uh, documentations, they can post links, they can share videos, they can share figures, write, uh, draw something, they can look at artists' content immediately. So actually uh, this create flexibilities, opportunities to do something uh, just beyond uh, group discussions. So through the digital whiteboard. And of course, uh, there are different kind of small projects like this. So developing mirror board, uh, going for uh, peer evaluations, uh, going for chatbot development, etc. There are lots of development and lots of studies they on. And of course, our goal, as I mentioned to the colleagues and teachers, so our goal is uh, we develop more quality time through technology. So uh, e-learning is not the goal, but the means. So through technologies, we can have less lecturing. Uh, more time for uh, mentoring and more time for active learning. So that's the end of my sharing. So, um, so uh, hopefully we actually address the things that we did in the past during the pandemic and in the new normal, talking about situations, not just, not just in Hong Kong, but also in some other countries in Asian Pacific region. Uh, and also we want to conduct further studies uh, to understand the ET training development uh, in different universities uh, across, uh, within the uh, Asian Pacific region. So that's what I want to share. So uh, again, so thanks for listening. So uh, we can have still have some, we can still have some time for some QA, yeah. So see if colleagues have some questions. Uh, yes, so, so if colleagues have some questions or ideas, so feel free to voice it out or type on the chat room, yes. Thank you very much for that, Leon. That was um, really interesting. Um, I can see that uh, Ova's uh, just said thanks for the interesting insight. I'm, I'm assuming um, there's no specific questions, I don't think, from participants yet. Um, no, but obviously we will share the uh, recording and um, you've made your slides available as well, haven't you, which is really yeah, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if uh, if people have chance to, um, to go back and uh, have another look at it then uh, oh that's great thanks for sharing them again um if there are anything uh, you've put your contact details on the slide if there is anything if anybody does have any further questions of you yes yeah 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 so okay all right then um okay it looks as if we may have a very late participant perhaps coming in who, who may have had difficulty with the time zone um yeah 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 so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, oh, yeah maybe some hong kong colleagues they thought uh 30 is uh yeah eight hours the difference is, but actually it's a seven hours difference yeah oh bless well yeah as we were saying earlier on there was a bit of confusion about that wasn't there so um yeah, yeah not to worry at least it's um it's recorded so they'll be able to see your your presentation um okay so i think then 
on that um, on that note, if there's no other um, questions or comments, I'd uh, just like to thank you very much for coming and giving us this um, this CPD webinar. This series has been really, really popular. So thank you for your time. It's um, much appreciated. And thank you to our participants as well for making the time and coming along today. I hope you found that um, very helpful. Hello to um, to anybody that's just joining us now. And um, I'm uh, I'm really sorry, but it seems to be there maybe a uh, disparity in the um, in the time zone but um, I shall stop recording now and then uh, just come back to you quickly <laughs>